Hello YouTube! Today I'm going to show you how to make a satellite launcher since I got a request for it on YouTube. Now the first thing you want to do is pick the right command capsule. I prefer this one since it allows you to easily attach the satellite here on top. So let's start with that. Ok, now first thing we want to do is build our satellite because that will give us some idea of how much lift we need. Ok, so let's build a simple satellite here. RCS, computer, and then, 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 then a nose cone with a cap as well as we want a pair of winglets or well, we'll pretend they're solar sails as well as some RCS thrusters for some small amount of maneuverability now this here is a stack decoupler which will allow us to separate the satellite from the rest of the ship. Now we'll want a pair of parachutes on our ship here. Now with this capsule it's important to add the parachutes in the middle otherwise when you turn your ship in the atmosphere or well after you've separated it from the rest of the rocket it will make the parachutes just rip off and fly away and that is a bad thing well I mean if you add them here on then they'll just rip off when you turn your ship after detaching the rest of the rocket so you need to add them here in the middle now we'll add another computer for the ship an SAS unit for a bit of extra stability and two fuel tanks for the return trip and then whatever setup of boosters you think will be good enough. I th think I'll go with a setup of six stacks here, which can be detached at a height of three here, plus another set of six stacks at a height of two fuel tanks here ok now we need to tie this whole thing together with struts to avoid any unnecessary bubble notice that I've used these engines here because they're vectoring engines and they'll make the ship more stable as long as you have a computer unit on it here ok oh yeah of course I forgot to we need an RCS tank here and one set of RCS thrusters here in order to nudge our ship away from the satellite after we've deployed it. You'll see why once we get into orbit. Ok, so we'll call this a, some kind of a communication satellite since it's too small to be anything else. We'll assume the transmitters and receivers are here in the snow scone, the computer coordinates the whole thing and these provide power. Ok, now we also want to tie the top of the ship, namely the satellite, together with the lower part, otherwise it will wobble far too much and we'll tie things together here and here ok, now we just need to add fuel lines to make sure the outer tanks drain before the inner ones oh, whoops, I think that was a strut ok well, whoops ok, we press ctrl z to undo our last move ok We want it to go from the bottom 
fuel tank on the stack we want to drain first to the top fuel tank of the stack we want to fuel from this set. So the fuel from these fuel tanks pours into the center here and the fuel from these drains into here so these will be drained fully before this is touched and this will drain fully before this is touched. Okay, now we want to make sure that all our engines start at the same time. We want to remove this extra s unnecessary stage here. Okay, now now this would remove at the s these would separate at the same time, which is something we do not want. We want to separate this first. Okay. Oh, and we want to add one parachute to this to make sure that it moves away from our ship when we separate it in the atmosphere. Okay. That should be fine, I think. Yeah, these separate first, then these, and then we're done. Yes, this should get into orbit relatively easily and allow us to launch our tiny satellite. Of course, you can make this as complicated and as cool looking as you want, since there are plenty of parts. It all depends really on how stable you can keep the whole thing with struts and SAS, and vectoring engines, of course, as well as how much mass you can lift into orbit, how powerful a ship you can build or how much you can get to the moon or the minmus if you want to place satellite a satellite in orbit around one of those okay so this looks okay we'll call it comsat1 save it and let's try it out okay i went for a relatively small ship since i I'm hoping that it won't lag too much when I launch it. Anyway, these, this first stage should separate pretty quickly, so even if it does lag a bit, it won't be for long. Now we press T to turn the SAS systems on, and we press space to launch our first stage, to trigger our first stage, this one here. And we're going up, and it looks like the lag isn't bad at all. Now we'll want to turn towards 90 degrees when we're high enough up, but not until we've gotten out of the thickest part of the atmosphere, which means we'll need to be at least 15 kilometers up in the air before we start our turn. But I do it this way because it's more fuel efficient to start turning sooner rather than later. Only if you turn too soon you end up wasting fuel because of too much atmospheric drag. Somewhere here in the atmosphere is just about right. Okay, we're about halfway up out of the thickest part of the atmosphere. Okay, the first set of fuel tanks has drained. We'll soon have to separate this one here. Don't worry, we should have plenty of fuel. We'll need to get this, get our speed up to 2,300 meters per second. But once we get out of a bit out of the atmosphere, we'll start speeding up more quickly. And now we get rid of our first stage, and this, as you can see, because of the fuel lines, is still fu full. It's just now starting to drain. Okay, and we can start our turn we'll head towards as close to 90 degrees as we can we'll turn towards we'll turn head at a 45 degree angle upwards at first and then we'll turn a little more okay yes we should make orbit easily and then place our satellite without any problems I already have one of one satellite which is a lot bigger actually up there but that's a survey satellite not a communications one so 
it's probably a good idea to place 